Yes, gentlemen, come in. This way. And of course, I will do all I can to help you apprehend the monster who did this. Oh, you God, Holmes, what kind of beast were you looking for? Who could do a thing like this? It would have needed someone of extraordinary strength and anger to commit such an atrocity, Watson. The wounds, Holmes. Look at the wounds. She looks like she's been attacked by wolves. Oh, look, Holmes, bite marks. Look, bite marks. Like the frenzied attack of a pack of wolves. This poor wretch has been torn apart. Yeah, not a pack, Watson, just one, I'll wager. Yes, this murder would be like the kind we've never seen before, and we'll need all of our wit and courage if we're going to catch this devil. <laughs> you are correct, Dr. Watson. They are bite marks. And she has been quite torn apart, but not by a wolf. For I know of no wolf, or for that matter, any creature of our good Lord's creation who could have inflicted such horrendous wounds. But, but I do digress. How, how may I help you, gentlemen? Well, firstly, Dr. Jekyll, perhaps you can tell us the exact location of where the body was found. Uh, um, I believe it was in the Devil's Acre, Westminster, and, and the approximate time of death. Yes. Yes, it was the Devil's Acre. Near Westminster, you are quite correct. Hmm. Duck Lane. Duck Lane, to be precise. Now, I myself, I was called out after I returned from my morning stroll, so that would be just after dawn. But I would put the uh, time of death at uh, somewhere between 3 and 5 a.m. for the body was, uh, was still warm. Oh, ye gods, Holmes! Watson, will you stop saying ye gods? I I'm sorry, Holmes, but, but ye gods! In the Devil's Acre, at the Devil's Time, at the hour of the wolf, legend has it that the wolf lurks on people's doorsteps between the hours of 3 and 5 a.m. <laughs> I do think your imagination is running away with you there just a touch, Dr. Watson. Yes, that's poppycock, Watson. Now, this is not the 15th century, and I will not be party to any superstitious twaddle about witches and wolves and things that go bump in the night. Oh, no, this killer is made of flesh and blood, just like you and I. And I have been tend to catch this one. Who's not going to escape? Not like the river. Oh, not, 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 not this time. Yes, gentlemen, well, I am sure you are aware of the outbreak of typhoid here in London at the moment, and in such I do have pressing work to complete. So, my time is of the essence. Thank you very much. If you need anything else, please do contact me again. Yes, thank you, Dr. Jekyll. We will. Thank you. Come, Watson. think of the illustrious Dr. Jekyll? A what? queer, queer chap. Uh, not easy to describe him. There's something displeasing about his appearance, mm. something, something detestable. Yet I've never met a man I so dislike, yet I scarce know why. It's something deformed. He's, he gives a strong sense of deformity. Yet I can't specify the point. He's, a, he's an amazing looking man, yet I can name nothing amazing about him. No, Holmes, I can make no hand of this at all. I can't even describe him. And it's not for the want of memory, for I swear I can see him in my mind's eye this very moment. But did you see the way he looked at me when I mentioned the hour of the wolf? It was like he changed. It was like looking into the eyes of the devil himself, Holmes. But, of course, that's ridiculous. A reputable doctor like that? Excellent, Watson. Yes, you say impossible. But when you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. Now, the only way that we can find this guilty party is to eliminate the innocent ones. 
Come on, Watson. The game's afoot. And I need a drink. Yes.